back at you with another. Hey everyone, I am happy to welcome you to your second lecture of the semester. I'm trying a new setup, so let me know how this quality is. So today we're going to go over a little bit of the history of marine biology before I set you guys loose on an activity for tomorrow. So marine, marine biology is the scientific study of organisms of the sea. I know this is aquatic science. Marine biology is contained within aquatic science. I like animals a bit better. I think they're a bit more interesting and we're going to spend a good chunk of our first semester with animals and starting on that So for the six weeks. So I figured we'd start with some more animal related stuff. Life on Earth probably originated in the sea. That's somebody's opinion. I'm not saying I necessarily support that. And really, marine life helps determine the very nature of our planet. Our oceans actually do control the weather or the temperature, climate. So the science of marine biology. Marine biology is closely related to oceanography, but the two are not synonymous. Oceanography is the scientific study of the oceans, the geography of the oceans. We'll get into that more possibly next semester. So first we're gonna start off with Aristotle, which is considered by many to be the first marine biologist. He lived in the 4th century BC Greece. Recognized by many basics of marine biology including that fish breathe using gills. James Cook, one of the first explorers to make scientific observations along the way and in and to include a full-time naturalist among his crew. This is a map of where he went and he created dependable charts, brought back plant and animal specimens. One observation he made was when the crew ate citrus fruits, they did not develop scurvy. Scurvy is from lack of vitamin C you need it in your life. Today we know that scurvy is caused by lack of vitamin C in the diet and he proved that through careful observation scientific discoveries can be made by non-scientists. Charles Darwin, most likely the most famous shipboard naturalist, sailed around the world on the HMS Beagle for five years best known for his theory of evolution. The Wilkes Expedition. From 1838 to 1842, led by Lieutenant Charles Wilkes of the U.S. Navy, discovered at least 2,000 previous unknown species, laid the foundation for government funding of scientific research. That's why we also have the Wilkes Foundation. So Edward Forbes, like the magazine, discovered many previous unknown organisms and recorded that the sea floor life at different depths, or recognized, sorry. So the Challenger Expedition, these are major from 1872 to 1876, led scientifically by Charles Wyville Tom Thompson, consi often considered the founder of oceanography, took 19 years and 50 volumes to publish all the results and brought back more information about the ocean than had previously been recorded in all human history. 
This also set new standards for studying the ocean. So here's a picture of one of the expeditions we just talked about. The growth of laboratories, this is major. So Henry, Moline, Edwards, and Victor Andwin. They were French zoologists and naturalists. They were the first to study shore life and bring equipment to the shore, like early field biologists. So the first U.S. Marine Laboratory was founded in 1930 in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is in Cape Cod. It is now called the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I've actually been to that campus and walked around before. It's pretty cool. So we're not going to get into any of that today. Um, email me after you get done watching this and just let me know that you watch the lecture and name your most interesting fact from the lecture. Thanks, have a great day.